Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube, which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. Thank you. So today we'll be starting off with Tenginix. Uh, so uh, the, the in the last session we had discussed uh, regarding the topic that is Apache and we had deployed uh, the Apache server as well and then we had configured different types of uh, uh, web pages like virtual host based on the po port based on the uh, host name right so in the last lecture itself we were very clear about what is a web server and uh, why do we require some softwares like uh, Apache or Nginx right so Nginx is again uh, so what is Nginx so Nginx is again a kind of web server but uh, the functionality is not only limited to the web server so what what uh, all uh, are the functionality with this particular nginx so let me discuss this let me just draw it for you so when we talk about nginx so basically this particular software is not only a web server but it can again act as if it is uh, it is a, a load balancer as well so it can act as a load balancer as well. So basically, it is by default a web server. You can configure web pages just like we did in the Apache as well. Same way uh, how we did in the Apache, we can set up the web server so that I will show you in, in, a, in a moment of time. And it can again act as a load balancer. It can act as a reverse proxy as well. Reverse proxy as well. So let me give you a quick introduction before we move ahead with our actual topic that is our uh, nginx so reverse proxy server so let me clarify these two concept here that is a what is a load balancer and what is a reverse uh, proxy server so basically uh, the functionality wise uh, both the things like load balancer and reverse proxy servers behaves as if thus in the same way i will again give you some industry uh, level examples where we can uh, you can think of how this uh, this particular thing can be helpful so let's talk about uh, load balancer first so what is a load balancer so load balancer is nothing but as the name indicates balance the load right so what is a load basically so in in linux terminology load is nothing but average cpu cycle being used so load average is like uh, the average of all the cpu cycles that is being consumed so in general also load means how many requests your particular web server is hitting or how much traffic is coming to your web server so let's assume these are your some of your web servers so and why do we require a load balancer first of all so when we talk about high availability when we talk about high availability so that means at any point of time your server your application is up and running okay when we talk about high, high availability what does that mean is with any point of time your application is reachable so you might have seen like you have you have used multiple websites like you you go on browse google you go on browse youtube so it is very rare that you will find those websites to be down why because they are using in the backend they are using high availability high availability means simply there are replicas running in the background so what is a replica so let's say this is your web page so this is your web page one so this particular web page two and web page three again is a copy of your web page so what happens whenever so why why do we require this kind of thing is so let's assume this is your load balancer now considering the fact that you have three backend server right so now let's say let's take a classic example of google.com so when someone wants to reach to the google.com basically what happens when you type in google.com it is going to give you some kind of ip so I, it will give you some kind of ip so that particular ip is nothing but a, your load balancer ip okay that is not your actual web server but it is ip of your load balancer server 
सो वॉट हैपन्स वेन यू टाइप इन गूगल डॉट कॉम सो बेसिकली वेन यू टाइप इन गूगल डॉट कॉम इट इट विल रिजॉल्व टू सम आई पी दैट इज अ लोड बैलेंसर सर्वर आई पी दैट रिक्वेस्ट विल हिट हियर ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर लोड बैलेंसर द रिक्वेस्ट विल हिट हियर एंड नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर लोड बैलेंसर विल डिसाइड वेदर टू ट्रांसफर दिस रिक्वेस्ट टू डब्ल्यू वन और डब्ल्यू टू और डब्ल्यू थ्री नाउ एज आई मेन्शन दिस डब्ल्यू वन डब्ल्यू टू एंड डब्ल्यू थ्री आर नथिंग बट दे आर द दे आर नथिंग बट द रेप्लीकाज ऑफ इच अदर सो वेन एवर आई फाइंड वेन एवर आई इफ आई सर्च गूगल डॉट कॉम इफ आई सर्च इट फ्रॉम माई मोबाइल और इफ आई सर्च इट फ्रॉम वेब ब्राउजर लाइक फ्रॉम मैक ओ एस और फ्रॉम विंडोज यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द सेम वेब पेज सो इट इज नॉट अ डिफरेंट वेब पेज दैट यू गेट राइट सो हाउ दिस थिंग इज वर्किंग इज बेसिकली वी दे यूज अ लोड बैलेंसर सो वॉट इज द जॉब ऑफ लोड बैलेंसर इज टू बैलेंस द लोड सो लेट से नाउ देर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रिक्वेस्ट दोज आर कमिंग इन हियर सो लेट से दिस इज अ रिक्वेस्ट वन दिस इज रिक्वेस्ट टू सो डेफिनेटली मल्टीपल पीपल आर यूजिंग गूगल डॉट कॉम राइट सो मल्टीपल रिक्वेस्ट विल बी हिटिंग ऑन द लोड बैलेंसर सो इट इज अ जॉब ऑफ द लोड बैलेंसर बेस्ड ऑन द कॉन्फिग्रेशन बेस्ड ऑन द कॉन्फिग्रेशन इट विल राउट द ट्रैफिक टू द बैक एंड होस्ट एंड नाउ लेट्स अज्यूम सम हाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर वेब सर्वर गोज डाउन और सम हाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर वेब सर्वर इज किल्ड सो स्टिल यू हैव डब्ल्यू टू एंड डब्ल्यू टू डब्ल्यू थ्री रनिंग सो इन दैट सीनारियो वॉट विल हैपन इज इवन इफ द रिक्वेस्ट इज हिटिंग इयर इट विल नॉट बी राउटेड टू डब्ल्यू वन बेस्ड ऑन द हेल्थ चेक्स सो वॉट आर हेल्थ चेक्स सो बेसिकली हेल्थ चेक्स आर नथिंग बट so health checks are nothing but to decide whether a backend server is healthy to respond to the request that are provided by the load balancer so basically this server sent the heartbeat so what is the heartbeat means it it sends some kind of signal or somehow load balancer also try to check using uh, the beats that okay this particular server is up or not if it is not reachable for some amount of time then load balancer drops this particular backend server and then keeps on uh, dividing the traffic between w2 and w3 so basically this particular setup that we are discussing here where we have three replicas of each uh, three replicas or multiple replicas of a single web server uh, will be called as a high available highly available uh, setup and to to reach to that server you have the load balancer now as i mentioned why do people will use nginx if you have already have apache right so basically in the last session we had seen that we were we we had installed http apache right now this particular http d apache was running as a web server so you were you you were able to run a web server but it does not provide any kind of load balancing capabilities or any kind of reverse proxy capabilities so similar you have what you have seen this particular example that we have seen the load balancer is there so this capability so again nginx behaves as if it is a web server also and again it is coming with this this capabilities that it can behave as a load balancer it can behave as a reverse proxy right so let's discuss what is a reverse proxy so basically if you understood what this load balancer is so you will easily get the reverse proxy also so in production environment what happens why it is called as a reverse proxy basically so i i'll explain you that so let's say this is your web server and let's say this is your database server now as you might uh, be aware that this particular database server is nothing but this particular server is very uh, very confidential so because it 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 contains the data so it has the confidential data and we want that this particular db server should be isolated so we don't want that it should be directly accessible from outside world we don't want this right uh, and in case of web server we want it to be reachable from outside world because that that is how the end user is going to access your web server correct and in 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 back end this web server communicates with the db server and then this is how your particular request get processed so when you request some web page so this is what happens it goes to the web server then it requests some data from the database server it will fetch that data and then it will bring back to you now from a point of security we don't want some external person to go ahead and uh, access our db server okay so for that what we do we create a private network for this and when i say private network 
so what is a private network is nothing but basically it is disconnected so this particular server is disconnected so it doesn't have the internet now let's say now let's say this particular server wants to download some packages so what will happen now since it is a disconnected setup since it is a private setup or disconnected setup this particular server doesn't have any kind of internet now if it doesn't have any kind of internet so how it is going to download the packages so for that scenario we require to have a reverse proxy server okay so this is called as a reverse proxy server reverse proxy server now what is a uh, advantage of this reverse proxy server is that so this particular server will be configured to talk with the backend db server okay and this can again communicate on the internet so how the flow is there so let's say now this particular db server wants some package let's say this db server requires postgres package to be updated so what is going to happen is this db server is going to send a request to your reverse proxy server and now your reverse proxy server will process that request and then whatever data is there it will forward back to the this server now you might say what is the advantage of this so let's say if there is some external user that wants to attack to your system so now this user whenever he will try to attack the particular server so what he will get he will get the ip address of the reverse proxy server he will not get the actual ip address of your host that is requesting so that is how you have kept your identity as a private so anyhow this particular server is now going to use uh, this server as a uh, proxy uh, so what is a proxy basically proxy means nothing but it is kind of one kind of shield or it is kind of one kind of uh, you can even think of a face mask that is this particular uh, db server is using to uh, hide its identity so this is what a reverse proxy server is so looking at the both the scenarios that we have discussed like the load balancing which is very much uh, relevant with the production environment nowadays and if we talk about this particular reverse proxy server which is again uh, a necessity of the any production server uh, the nginx is considered to be one of the most advanced uh, web servers and that is how that is why it is uh, uh, considered to be i mean it is being used so what is nginx so again nginx is uh, again it, it can be pro uh, pronounced as nginx it is an open source fast weight uh, lightweight and high performance web server that can be used to serve a static website so just like apache we we we, uh, we have seen how the apache serves then nginx can be again uh, considered uh, as a web server behind apache web server and microsoft iis so this is again microsoft iis is a program uh, that you can uh, run to create the websites uh, so again uh, in initial re uh, release nginx was function for http web serving but today it serves as a reverse proxy server that whatever i have explained you for http https and there are lots of other protocols as well on the other hand it is also used as a http load balancer as well so it can do the load balancing all, also so that is what uh, the use of your nginx is so uh, uh, nginx then improves the content and application delivery so it improves security as we seen it can be used as a reverse proxy it facilitates the scalability and availability so when i say scalability what this particular terminology means so let's say considering the fact that you let's say you have one web server right so you have this particular web server so with apache you can create only this web server one web server only but with nginx you are able to manage w1 w2 w3 so that is what the scale is so in in future again the this particular web server that is running on apache let's say will will be able to only handle one one connection at a time okay so it will handle one connection at a time but but considering the architecture of your nginx it can handle multiple requests so that is what we are going to discuss but yeah it 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 facilitates the scalability and availability for the busiest website so you can see there are lots of website that we are going to see uh, so their nginx is uh, basically used so now uh, nginx is a kind of software that will be uh, used to run a web servers so previously we used to uh, uh, run this apache web servers to handle these functions but now as the technology is moving ahead we are going with, with the nginx so again uh, what is the very speciality about nginx is it can again solves the uh, connection problem so let's say 
you have 10,000 connections at the same time. So let's say there is a sale on Amazon Big Billion sale or let's say there is a sale on any shopping website. So in that scenario, definitely there is going to be lots of traffic on the website. So you cannot just go ahead with the Apache server and you know, because Apache server can handle uh, less requests as compared to the Nginx server. So Nginx will uh, can can manage at least thousands of connections at a single time. So even if there are a thousand connection coming on the same server, it can manage that. So we are going to discuss that how it does that. So once you learn about the architecture of Nginx, uh, it will be more clear for you. Now, uh, if we talk about the uses of this Nginx, so IBM, Google, Atlassian, Autodesk, GitLab, T-Mobile, Microsoft. So all those companies are using Nginx. So definitely if these companies are using this particular software, so definitely this software is going to be uh, uh, very useful in their environment. So why to use Nginx uh, instead of Apache? So as I explained already, Apache will only serve as a web page. So it will, it will work as a web server. But this particular Nginx will serve you and do the multiple things. Now let's talk about uh, again the if you talk about the uh, the logging, the blacklisting, the load balancing. So all those services are very much streamlined in Nginx. So there is a configuration for everything. Uh, and once we see the configuration, you will understand that uh, it is very easy to uh, configure it as a load balancer as well as configure it as a reverse proxy. And even if not, if you if you want, we can just configure it as a web server as well. So let's go ahead and let's discuss how uh, the Nginx works. So basically, if we talk about the working of the Nginx, so in the previous example, when, when we were discussing Apache, right? So I did not mention anything about like there are some internal connections or backend connections that are going on, right? So basically what happens in case of Nginx is that it divides your processes into worker processes. So basically, let's say, let's take this example. Let's say your web server hosts MP3 files and MP4, which is video format files, right? So let's say your, your website uh, hosts those files. So some, some are MP3 files and some are MP4 files. Now, Nginx is intelligent enough to divide your particular uh, indexing into the processes such that whenever there will be connections who are requiring the MP3 connections only, that can be handled by this particular worker process one and again each worker process can handle multiple requests so around 1020 connection at a time so from the ago diagram a single worker connection can handle around 1024 connection at a time so that is why if you create multiple worker processes inside your nginx so definitely if, you, if there are 10 worker processes automatically it is going to handle 10,000 connection at a time so that's what our point was when I started discussing about like it can uh, handle multiple requests. So basically, uh, if we discuss uh, something about theory, so what happens is basically when when you create when you request anything on the Apache server, so on Apache server it will open up a thread, or thread means nothing but a process. So basically, what happens whenever someone is trying to access your web server, it will be creating one service. Uh, sorry, it will be creating one process inside your web server. Now, so traditionally web servers like Apache will create a single thread for every request. So that means thread is nothing but a sub process basically uh, in layman terms. So for every request, there will be some sub process will be created, but Nginx does not uh, work that way. So basically Nginx divides its job in the worker processes and worker connections. And again, as we can see worker processes means as I explained you, like there can be different files and the indexing indexing can be done in different ways. So based on that, the worker processes will be created and this worker process, the job of this worker process is to manage the worker connection for this particular type of data. So that is how uh, this particular architecture of Nginx works and that is how it is able to manage uh, uh, the 1024 similar request. So that is what uh, uh, it, it has become the excellent server for website like e-commerce and search engine and cloud storage. So what are the features of Nginx again? So features are Nginx uh, are like uh, again reverse proxy with caching. It supports IPv6. Uh, you can do the load balancing. It, it can again works as a web sockets. It can handle static files, index files. So as, as I was explaining, right, let's say you want to host some MP3 or MP4 files. So you can use that this particular uh, Nginx software. Then again, it has something called as URS, uh, URL re re rewriting and redirection. 
so based on the url so i'll give you one example let's say if you go if you go to google.com okay if you go to google.com okay so this is one website that you see let's say now instead of this particular thing if you add something like gmail at the end right if you enter basically this particular gmail that you are trying to enter so this is just an example so you can just go to some different sites so what i am trying to say is so based on the url based on the url you can route the traffic to the different host so if you remember when we were creating the virtual host in apache so what did we do in apache we created the virtual host and based on that particular virtual host we were able to do this particular load balancing like let's say uh, i'll just give a brief for you since it is it's been one week so i'll just give you uh, a brief for you so it was like a name based and name based and port based so in name based we were specifying some domain like let's say example.com if you remember we had configured something like example.com so we had configured a completely different direct so what i was talking is when we talk about name based and port based uh, servers right so we were discussing this particular example.com and uh, when we talk about port based so we were specifying the port at the end of our website but in in contrast with that if we talk about uh, the if we talk about this particular website or nginx right so you can just go ahead and based on the url you can create different virtual host so what is a url so let's say if you talk about uh, example.com so in example.com itself you can create multiple website like let's say first website can be login then uh, the similar website slash let's say uh database so i'm just giving one example then example.com slash images something like that so it is giving you an option to create multiple host based on the url so what will happen when someone tries to access example.com using this particular slash login it will redirect to let's say w1 website 1 or your another host then if you talk about the database so it is going to it is going to uh, route your traffic to some different uh, web server right so which will which will have the data around this particular static uh, web server then let's talk about images so it will uh, route the traffic to some web server that will contain the images so something like that so it supports this particularly uh, redirection that is url rewriting and redirection so what can nginx and nginx plus can do for us so basically it can uh, so if you uh, if you talk about the load balancer so load balancer are like it is like not a new concept in the it industry so we have been using uh, the particularly load balancer from Le uh, legacy time so in legacy there were a load balancer who were hardware ha hardware load balancer so we were using the hardware load balancer but this particular software which is a software based load balancer make sure that we no longer require a load balancer hardware load balancer so basically nginx is open source which is less expensive and more configurable than hardware load balancer so you are basically saving a cost there and it is designed for modern cloud architecture so it is not only you know when you talk about hardware so definitely it is going to have some compatibility when we compare uh, compare about different types of cloud right but when we talk about nginx it is a just a software so it just depends on the os that you want to install so you can go ahead and install it on ubuntu you can go ahead and install it on linux uh, the red hat linux and twice linux whatever you want so in that way this will help to save our the save the cost then nginx is a multi function tool so it is not only the web browser but again it can do lots of stuff that we have already discussed now it is not only like as nginx is being funded and operated by uh, uh, one organization that is again founded and named as a nginx itself so if you go to nginx website you can see that this particular project is being sponsored by uh, nginx which is company itself and this particular company can again uh, provide you the industry level uh, support for for your software right so it can give you load balancing microservices cloud security so so basically it has all different types of uh, versions that you have if you go ahead with nginx open source so this is nothing but a uh, open source or a community community edition 
so here it has a rich documentation you can just go ahead and you can choose uh, wherever you want to install uh, so uh, based on the os you can just go ahead and uh, install it so definitely we are going to do some demo we are going to install this particular software uh, so this particular documentation will provide you the information right so this is a community edition then you have uh, like you can install nginx plus on uh, amazon so again you can just go ahead and directly select some uh, linux ami you can again check that there will be uh, the docker image for nginx as well so if you check for that docker nginx so definitely there there is going to be an official image for the nginx so so that's what i uh, when we talk about the portability and uh, you know the supportability with this software definitely it is going to support it uh, using uh, the production grade company right it is supported with the nginx uh, when we talk about apache so definitely apache is again a open source software right but if we talk about the uh, basically the differences so we have lots of differences here so that's why the main agenda is learning about uh, the this particular uh, nginx right so uh, we will be able to i'll explain you everything like how we need to configure and uh, what things we need to add so uh, it acts as a multi function tool and it keeps on evolving so nginx as a organization will keep on adding new features okay and that is how it is going to help us to uh, uh, use it as a different uh, software so let's go ahead and discuss more about uh, like getting a idea of what uh, what is the difference between apache and nginx so basically most of the point we have already covered so i'll be just quickly going through the uh, the theory part but uh, mostly we have already covered that so apache http server uh, apache http server is a open source high performance web server uh, and it is designed to create a secure robust and efficient web server in line with the current http standard apache remains the first choice among the server administrations because of its flexibility architectural simplicity and power compatibility but it is just a web server okay it can run almost all on all, all all the operating system like windows linux but it is commonly used with the linux only so in the last lecture we had installed in the, in the linux only. then uh, apache became the backbone of uh, ww that is world wide web so if you remember uh, we had a directory in var www html so so that is why apache so you can say that apache uh, apache uh, nginx cannot compete against a feature rich apache on many fronts uh, many fronts but uh, if you talk about the functionality like since it is just a single threaded architecture that is uh, apache is a single threaded so on top of that nginx will have a lead over there so if you only talk about uh, the the portability if you just want to make sure that you don't care about the connections let's say your website is not that busy and you want my website to be running as a dedicated web server nothing else than that you can go ahead with the apache right so then bug fixing support maintenance and application de development is managed and maintained by the community users okay but when we talk about nginx so it is founded uh, uh, in 2011 so it, basically if you talk about the support definitely you are going to get a better support in nginx because it has the uh, default it has a founded uh, company so basically it will work uh, uh, on top of that right now uh, how uh, what is the major difference is uh, the the way the apache and nginx work so apache works in a different way and nginx works so we have already discussed about the worker configuration like worker connections and then uh, worker processes so that way it works apache can handle single thread nginx can handle multiple connection then uh, apache server has a multi threaded architecture which lacks the scalability while we talk about nginx so it is uh, you can uh, have a multiple client request then apache serves as a static content using conventional method uh, and nginx on the other hand cannot process dynamic content internally so basically if you add some packages to apache like modules basically so it can again serve the uh, dynamic website but when you talk about nginx it, it doesn't have that kind of capabilities so it relies on the external processes for the execution so this is what a basic uh, difference uh, again you can go through this particular slide so it is all what we have discussed until now nothing more than that i mean you will see all those points are already being covered so then let's move ahead to our next topic that is watch our complete session enroll for our premium membership 
Click on to the join button and enroll yourself with the best suited option. Installing the Nginx on the uh, Ubuntu. So let me just open my Amazon AWS server. So I'll just log in into my web server uh, Amazon console and I'm going to install the web page. Uh, so uh, the Nginx. So let me just go ahead and install. So it is asking for captcha. Okay. So let's get uh, to quickly to EC2 instance and I will spawn up one Ubuntu instance and we are going to install Nginx very quickly. So it is just like uh, having uh, creating a machine and it is like very quickly. So again, if you talk about AWS, so if you go ahead here and if you search for let's say launch instance. So let me go to EC2 launch instance. Okay, it seems like they have changed the way how we launch the instances. Let me launch the instance so you can give the server name. So I'll just say Nginx server. And I'll just say something like this. So it is like a name and tag. So now you see here, you can just quickly search for Nginx as well. So actually, uh, if you search for Nginx, you will get that there are uh, there are the uh, the Nginx plus with Nginx app protector Ubuntu image is already available. So that is the AMI that is available uh, directly in the Amazon. So if you want to use that, you can just quickly go ahead and use uh, that as a uh, as a server. But again, uh, it is not mandatory. So when you want to uh, personally, I mean when you want to configure it manually, you can just go ahead. I will just say Nginx server. And I will just select Ubuntu here. The latest version I will select free tier eligible 64 bit version T2 micro again, which is free tier eligible key pair. I will just create a new a new key pair here. So let, let's create a new key pair and just say and Linux server. And I'll be just creating a PM file. So it seems like the Amazon has changed a lot as an AWS uh, instance. How we launch the instance. Uh, it has changed so again you have the network settings you can uh, do the uh, allow the ssh uh, from anywhere again you will require the http traffic because uh, as we are going to use it as a web server so definitely we are going to use it as a http so it will require it as a uh, server then uh, uh, based on the storage you can choose whatever storage you want i'll just go ahead with the 8 gb advanced details uh okay that is all about uh, advanced things i can just go ahead and i can just say launch the instance so it is going to launch the instance for me all right so let me go to the instances and let me refresh this particular page so yeah my server is in pending state now Let me refresh the page. All right, so the server is now running state. Let's go to SSH client. Let me just log in into the server. So basically whatever I have done until now is nothing but I have installed. Uh, I have just uh, created one machine. That's it, nothing else. So let me go to downloads. Let me modify the permission for my that I'll be using to log into this server and once I do that uh, the all the process is mentioned here I can just go ahead quickly and use this command to launch uh, into my server so it is asking do I want to connect yes I want to connect I'll just say yes I can just say sudo su hyphen and I'm inside my Ubuntu machine so now once we have installed the machine let's configure the machine you can again go ahead in your documentation and you can just quickly uh, go ahead and you say installing nginx so let's click on that installing nginx open source and uh, there are two ways you can choose you can just use the pre-built package or you can compile from source so pre-built package generally will be used to deploy a, a default version and let's say you want to make some customized customized version then you will compile it from source so let's go ahead and uh, let's run some commands here. So 
for uh, so you have to choose uh, from which uh, which repository will be going at so we need to install using prebuilt debian packages so let's run the command from here because we have installed uh, the ubuntu you can again uh, if you install uh, the red hat family so that is also fine so in red hat family also you you have, you have to use these commands that is that's it i mean it is not a rocket task it is just three commands uh, that you need to use so again uh, you need to add a repo and then you can just install nginx so i'll just uh, say sudo apt get it will say done let's install the nginx yes okay so once you install it so definitely uh, it will be provided as a default package uh, in case of ubuntu but in case of uh, red hat family you have to set up the repository first so you will have to create a repository first uh, in atcm.repos.d and inside that repository you have to mention the version uh, i mean the url where you will find that particular thing so basically you have to follow along this particular uh, commands and uh, you will be able to install it so that is not an issue so once you install that you have to just check if the installation is successful or not so you can see if i do nginx hyphen v the nginx has been installed here nginx has been installed here and now you can just uh, go ahead and curl uh, something so i'll just say curl my local host so first of all once you add uh, this particular service so let's see if what is the status of the nginx service here okay so it is active in active and running and it is enabled also right so if it is not active you, you have to say uh, system ctl start nginx so this is the first command you need to add and the second command you need to add is system ctl enable nginx so that will enable your particular service but uh, since it is already enabled you can see it it is already enabled if i do curl local host okay so i can see something like welcome to nginx now let's see if i go to my web server and i have i had already opened the at port so let me see if i can reach it here so you can see the welcome to nginx so that means you have successfully configured uh, this particular web server so now it is working as a web server but let's talk about uh, the configuration um, that we are using uh, so so let's go ahead and let's discuss about the config so installation is quite simple you can again uh, if i want to explain you like how you can go ahead and install on red hat as well so you have to just go ahead and you have to run these commands and again to install it on windows so basically nginx can be again installed on the windows as well so i'll just give you that particular thing so basically you will have to download uh, one package and based on that package uh, you will be able to simply install it on the windows as well so all right all right so once we understand that this is the basic default page and it says that nginx web server is successfully installed and working and further configuration can be required so you can just go ahead and you can uh, just serving a static con uh, content and you will have to create uh, some files and based on those files uh, it will be able to serve those requests but let's let's talk more about how like as i was explaining you lots of things like it can do the mp3 it can do the mp4 something of that sort like it can create processes it can do the load balancing so let's talk about that first so let me just open up the documentation so we have successfully installed uh, the nginx uh, then again if you are using firewall so you will definitely have to enable the http port that is at port and basically uh, to serve the content uh, uh, nginx will be using http and https that is http will use at port and https will use 443 port then uh, basically if you talk about nginx full it allows both port at and 443 uh, HTTP means AT only and HTTPS means 443 only. So that is what command you can use if you are using firewall. But since we are not using firewall, we have to just open a port inside our security group inside a, a, web, a, a web software that is your AWS. Then uh, we have checked the status, so service status. So let me just rerun that command one more time. System CTL. 
status engineer so you see this particular uh, service is using this binary that is has been nginx binary uh, to run this particular web server okay and now once this so as a part of this service you can again go ahead and check for that particular service as well service definition as well so this is going to tell you this is particularly a service uh, definition in description itself it is a by default coming with the nginx download download uh, option and it is a high performance web server and a reverse proxy server then you can see there are lots of uh, commands that are required and that that is a basically a service definition uh, for your engine so once you understand this uh, we have seen uh, what is a welcome uh, again you can install it on the uh, red hat machine uh, that we have already discussed so you can just go ahead and try it on red hat machine as well or uh, the fedora family basically so we can uh, check the installation by using this particular command that is nginx hyphen v and again you can check ps hyphen ef that is uh, the command for taking the processes and you can just do nginx and it is going to tell you that okay nginx is now running okay so that is how uh, you can make sure that the nginx is uh, properly running then um, so we have covered this thing already so how to install it on the windows machine so basically you have to go to this particular download link okay so this this provides you the nginx download link and uh, it it will uh, then you once download you have to just simply install it so basically it comes as a pre uh, packaged uh, image uh, in case of uh, the ubuntu let me see if i have some instance running that is having the windows machine Okay, so let me connect to this particular instance using RTP. Let me just get the Windows PM file. Okay, again this is a windows server that is being hosted on aws so what i was trying to tell you is that you can just simply go ahead and install the windows server so let me uh, i mean the nginx on the windows as well so let me see if i can download it okay it might take it will it might require some more things since it is a uh, uh, server ac2 managed server so it might be having a more security when we talk about security so basically it won't allow me to download the packages so yeah maybe i can cover that later as well but yeah i mean it will be the same as what we have seen in the uh, in the linux so just you have to download the this particular windows image so let's say this is a stable image you can just go ahead and download this image so once you download this particular image so you will see that there will be the exe file so if you are if you are a microsoft windows user you can simply run this file as a exe file then you can do next 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 as you do you can choose the default directory and then this is how you install nginx on the windows as well so i mean it is not a tough task uh, it is just like installing any other package uh, like vlc and other packages right so uh, with respect to and uh, windows it is very easy to install the packages so maybe i can demonstrate that as well I have to fix uh, the download issue. Uh, for commands in the in the Windows, so definitely uh, you will have to. So basically, by default, it will be installed in C directory. So inside C directory, you will see nginx folder, and inside that, you will see every directory. Like in nginx, uh, you will see the HTML directory, you will see the logs directory, configuration directory. So uh, we will shortly see how the configuration will look like. So 
and then we, you can run multiple commands in inside your powershell also so you can run nginx hyphen s stop nginx hyphen s quit nginx hyphen s reload and nginx reopen so this is how i mean the different commands work in the windows operating system so again how to start and enable the service we have already seen that how to stop the service so system ctl stop the service and let's talk about uh, some more things like uh, let's say what is a reload nginx what is this particular command so let's say if you remember in the apache lecture when we were adding some configuration in httpd configuration file we were able to uh, add that configuration with the reload command so basically without restarting the whole service it just refreshes the uh, co configuration so that is how you can just say you can just go ahead and you can just say system ctl so we are now inside uh, this particular server that is our ubuntu server one more time and if you do sudo system ctl reload nginx so that will be reloading your service uh, i mean basically it will be adding whatever configuration changes you, you have done so that is another option that we need to know because there might be the configuration that we do right so uh, let's talk about uh, what kind of uh, how to check the configuration basically so if you want to check the configuration you have to just run service nginx config test okay so it will it will tell that your configuration is failing here right so that is because if you have not configured anything just like if you remember we had an option like httpd httpd hyphen t right to checking the syntax right so similar to that you have uh, this particular thing that will again check the syntax in your particularly etc file so syntax is okay it is what it is saying so you can just run it with sudo command to check the syntax and here you can just get the configuration file is nothing but your etc uh, nginx nginx dot config file so let's go ahead and let's see what kind of configuration file it is so if you open it this particular file is again having something called as events uh, then you have something called as http so inside http you have something called as what yeah, you need to include then ssl setting logging setting so where the logs will be stored so log will be stored in this particular directory where log nginx access log same like if you remember we had discussed for the apache similarly there are access log and error log so access log and error log i hope you are already uh, sure on that then again there are lots of configuration we will discuss one by one so and then you see there is something called as a server uh, here it is listening on let's say uh, localhost 110 localhost 114 so let's let's talk about how you can configure uh, particularly the nginx to act as a, a first of all load balancer right so let's let's talk more about like so we have already knew we already knew the concept of load balancer now so in the starting of this particular lecture itself i have explained what is a load balancer now let's talk about how we can configure and what is the configuration that looks like okay so basically now when i when i when when i talk about this particular diagram okay when i talk about this particular diagram where i am just uh, running this particular server as a load balancer traffic is coming here and then it is routed so how this particular load balancer understand which request should go where right so we need to understand this configuration first so that is what it do so basically it works on the two component okay it works on the two component so first thing is server and second thing is the backend so basically uh, to make you understand visually let me draw this so basically think like this so there is one configuration line that is called as server and then there is a, another configuration block that is uh, declared for the backend now this server will redirect through the backend uh, logic basically when i say backend logic so let's say if i want to reach if i let's say if i reach on let's say www.example.com example.com slash let's say search so for slash search for slash search where should my backend uh, should go i mean where this request should be routed because there can be multiple things like search then then can be images 
then that there can be mail something of that sort right so where uh, in the back end my particular server should go so when we talk about this particular configuration you can see you have the server location as slash okay so that means it is just a slash means uh, just like www.example.com slash nothing else nothing that so it is telling to pass this request so whenever someone will try to access www.example.com slash right so he is going to be redirected to the backend HTTP. So if you go to the HTTP now, so this HTTP is again defined in the same file that is HTTP config file. Uh, that is uh, that is your uh, nginx one file. Now here you are mentioning something like upstream backend. So for HTTP, you, you see here HTTP, the upstream backend is mentioned that there are three servers, right? There are three servers mentioned here. Backend one, backend two, and then one is backup server. So basically this backup server will only only available if one of this server fails otherwise this server will not work then i will explain you what this particular weight is but basically i wanted you to understand how the traffic is moving so basically this there is a search path the traffic is reaching on this particular slash so in this example we are taking slash search and then it is routing to the http backend and in http backend we have mentioned some some servers so this is how the traffic will move along so let's talk about uh, the server groups that we can have so this this example we have uh, already explained now let's say how the load balancing will happen so basically let's talk more about uh, the types uh, that are there so types of load balancing basically so let me just open a new web page so uh, we'll be discussing types of load balancer because this particular load balancing strategy you have to mention in case of your configuration so let's say you have these three servers one two and three and this is your load balancer now let's say particularly if request come so how should this particular request should be routed to the backend so first strategy that we are discussing is called as a round robin that is round robin and what is a round robin means it is simply as the name indicates round robin right so first request will go here second request will go here third request will go here okay and when there is a fourth request automatically it will go to the first server so this is fourth request then let's say there is a fifth request so it will go here so it is like a round robin okay so uh, the requests are uh, transferred based on the the next server so let's say there are three servers so fourth will go to the first fifth will go to the second so this is how the round robin works okay and how to define that so inside your particular uh, uh, this particular thing if you don't define anything <coughs> so let's say if you don't define any uh, load balancing strategy so by default round ro robin will be taken so round robin is a default load balancing strategy here then let's talk about list connection so how to mention that so in backend block you have to just mention list connection so what is a list connection basically so it takes into account now let's uh, talk about this particular example i will just clear this thing okay now again we have three servers and this time uh, i am talking about this time i am talking about the list connection so that is a list connection so let's say how list connection works let's say the traffic is uh, coming here so first request sit here now for the next request it checks okay where should i go so now for next request it either it sh it will never go to server 1 because already server 1 has one request so it will either go to server 2 or server 3 so let's let's say it chooses server 2 or for this example uh, to avoid the confusion let's say instead of this server 2 let's say it chooses so it is all random if there are two server and those are having the same uh, capacity so what is going to happen this request might even go to the server 3 it is not right like a round robin so now when the next request comes in 
so now this particular request will then it knows that okay this server only have the less connection these two are already occupied okay now all the three server have three connections now let's say there is a four, fourth connection now coming here so this fourth connection is going to go to any of the server not like only first server but it can again go to this particular thing that is a third server okay then let's say fifth fifth connection appears here so fifth connection may, might again go anywhere whichever having a low low connection so this is what called as a list connection okay so i hope it is clear what is the list connection then you have ip hash you have generic hash and list time and random so let me just go through it and then we can have the server better as well so just give me a moment all right so this is about least connection let's go ahead and discuss about the uh, uh, the ip hash so basically what happens ip hash is like uh, hashing uh, the ip address uh, based on the uh, based on the uh, octets so basically this method is used to determine what server should be selected for the next request in this type either the first three octet of the ipv4 address so first three octet means 192.168 let's let's assume that dot one dot one let's say so this particularly these three servers this three octet so this is octet one octet two octet three and octet four so this three octet will be hashed with some value and based on that that hashing value it will decide where the traffic should go so this is how the ip hash works so if it is a, a ipv6 then all the whole ipv6 address all the octets will be used to hash and based on that hash so let's say i'll give you one example so based on this let's say this is the ip address of your client let's assume that so if i take the three uh, uh, octets and if i create some hash with let's say some random random value okay so that random value will give you some kind of uh, server ip address okay or it will give you on which server to go so basically hashing means nothing but i will give you one example like hashing can be uh, something like uh, uh, mixing it with some other value like let's say there is this value 1010 if i am hashing it with let's say 1111 so it might do something like this so it will transform this 1 to 0 0 to 1 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 something like that so you you just understand that ip hashing will uh, develop some kind of hash in the backend and based on that hash it will select the uh, backend server then you have let's say you want to remove some server from your list let's say you are doing some maintenance so you have to just mention down in front of that in the configuration so it will be removed from the uh, particular configuration then you have generic hash so generic hash is nothing but uh, you can just have uh, this particular generic hash is again uh, it based on the user defined key uh, like uh, string text variable it will generate a hash and key key can be paired with source ip address or and port and key key may be the url so let's say someone is trying to access uh, so based on the key let's say someone is trying to access images so this particular value of images will be hashed with the ip address of the host or the port of the host and it will generate some random value and based on that the load balancing will happen i mean these are all advanced uh, algorithms uh, basically by default you will see that most probably the round robin and list connection will be used then again list time so list time as the name indicates whichever server will take the least time to reach to the request so whichever is responding fast which has the less latency that will be uh, given the uh, particular request the connection request then random means again it will be selected randomly then again let's say you want to make sure so sometimes what may happen i will give you one more example here so let's say you, you you are deploying some new feature so this is your load balancer and these are your servers okay and let's say you are deploying some uh, new feature on your particular web server so let's say first of all your uh, world uh, web page 1 web page 2 is running on version 1 version 2 version 1 and web page let's say you deployed version 2 now what you want you want that most of my traffic should go on version uh, w1 and w2 only so let's say there are 10 requests so out of 10 three should go here or four should go here four should go here and two should only go here because this is a new version i don't know if it is working fine or not so 448 and 210 so now what i can do is so i want four requests should go here 
so for that i can define some weight for this particular server so if i define some weight watch our complete session enroll for our premium membership click on to the join button and enroll yourself with the best suited option by default every for everyone the weight is one but for now in this particular example if you see weight 5 is there so definitely most of the requests in this example will go to the server one so this is about the server weights then again we have a server slow start so sometimes what may happen is uh, your server goes down and then it comes up slowly so you don't want that your request should go to the server that is just coming up it is not yet ready to accept the request right so in that scenario you can just mention slow start so until 30 seconds it will not uh, give any request to this particular backend server if it is rebooted okay uh, i think i will stop it here and uh, we can continue it on the next session along with that you can access our other tutorials such as docker ansible jenkins terraform splunk aws azure and various other devops related premium tutorials with our channel membership if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video to get our channel membership click on to the join button select the 399 plan and grow your skills immensely please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching